Welcome, brothers and sisters, to today's Morning Heart Devotion. And let us start off by offering a greeting to our Heavenly Parent and True Parents. 존징 참포님께 경배 바로 And to lead us into the family pledge, I'd like to invite our Reverend Milhan Stevens. 가정 맹세 1. 천혜어국 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 본향 땅을 찾아 본연의 창조의 상인 지상 천국과 천상 천국을 창건할 것을 맹세하나이다. 2. 천혜어국 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님과 참 부모님을 모시어 천주의 대표적 가정이 되며 중심적 가정이 되어 가정에서는 효자, 국계에서는 중심, 세계에서는 성인, 천주에서는 성자의 가정의 도리를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 3. 천여국 주인, 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 4대 심정권과 3대 왕권과 황족권을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 4. 천혜어국 주인, 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님의 창조의 상인 천주대 가족을 형성하여 자유와 평화와 통일과 행복의 세계를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 5. 천혜어국 주인, 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 매일 주체적 천상세계와 대상적 지상 세계의 통일을 향해 전진적 발전을 촉진화할 것을 맹세하나이다. 6. 천여국 주인, 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님과 참 부모님의 대신 가정으로서 천연을 움직이는 가정이 되어 하늘의 축복을 주변에 연결시키는 가정을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 7. 천여국 주인, 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 본연의 혈통과 연결된 위하는 생활을 통하여 신정문화 세계를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 8. 천여국 주인, 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 천여국 시대를 맞이하여 절대 신앙, 절대 사랑, 절대 복종으로 신인의 일체 이상을 이루어 지상 천국과 천상 천국의 해방권과 석방권을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. Thank you, Reverend Milhan. And to open us up in prayer, I'd like to invite up Mr. Pierre Beauregard. So, Mr. Pierre, if you can please unmute yourself at this time. Yes, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Good morning, our Heavenly Parent, our Creator of Heaven and Earth. Heavenly Parent, we're grateful to be alive in this time in 2021. Seems uh, incredible to be alive in this time and uh, beyond uh, the life of our True Father, already passed away so many incredibly seems such a long time ago already 2012 and now being led by our true mother heavenly parent our true mother is uh leading us and uh in ways that uh, the humanity has never seen before and for the first time in heaven for the first time in the history of heaven and earth uh, a woman has completely fulfilled the mission of eve and is leading us here on earth Heavenly Parent, she is truly the way, the truth, and the life here on this physical earth at this point. And Christianity is awakening and recognizing the leadership uh, that is uh, historical. And uh, really, uh, a great awakening is happening. And uh, thanks to uh, thanks to our true parents, we are becoming one. Christianity and the followers of our true parents are becoming one and blessed couples are fulfilling the mandate 
to uh, and to let your Holy Spirit, your divine love, uh, inhabit our lives. We are grateful to be here uh, all together, brothers and sisters across Canada and USA, and even from other countries, gathering every morning under the guidance and the leadership of your precious son, Reverend Chung Sik Yong, who is the inheritor of Yo Han Li and a, and a uh, great son of our true parents. We thank you for this time that we can share together, that we can be uh, as truly connecting as brothers and sisters. It is so precious every morning. We really appreciate it. And uh, we are, thank you. I offer this prayer in my name, Pierre Beauregard and Amelia Valdez, a blessing for family, Aju. Aju, thank you so much, Reverend Pierre Beauty God. Thank you. Kamsamida. Thank you, Mr. Beauregard. And so now, brothers and sisters, let us take this time to be able to share our appreciation points and gratitude points for today. And if you're joining here by yourself, uh, please take this time to reflect um, on your own. So with that, let us go into our breakouts.
And welcome back, brothers and sisters. I hope you had a wonderful time sharing your appreciation points with uh, each other. And to be able to share with the whole group at this time, I'd like to invite up Mr. Kenji Uokawa. So Mr. Kenji Uokawa, if you can please unmute yourself. Hi, good morning. Uh, yesterday, my family, I took a day off and took my family to the uh, sightseeing. And that because my daughter is going back to join the missionary uh, pretty soon, and I, that we asked my uh, uh, older brother where he wants to go. And he picked the location the, uh, to see the, the battleship of New Jersey. That's a massive battleship, you know, who she, she fought in you know, World War II, you know, the uh, Korean War, and later on the Vietnam War. So it was, uh, took like a couple hours to drove there. Personally, that my, I have, uh, you know, parents who grown up in Tokyo, you know, during World War time. And because of that uh, location is nearby, you know, airplane, fact airplane factories, you know, my dad used to work, my dad worked when he was a student and that bomb fell. And I really didn't, when I was a kid, I really don't like Americans. And after I joined the church, you know, at the American, they had American missions and, you know, because I changed. So that old family, you know, that uh, paid $25 fee and they went up and down, you know, went almost everywhere with this battleship to see. And I realized, you know, that uh, the ship is actually looks so big, but if you go inside, you know, to squeeze such a hundred of hundred people in that big ship is not, enough space in you know, like bank bed everywhere, you know, that's a living space is you know, so tiny, you know, and I, I just imagined like how much difficulty, you know, those people sailing so many days, risking their life, you know, I really appreciate, you know, now I can stand the perspective of American soldiers, you know, then also I really appreciate the America fought for the world peace. Yeah, thank you so oh, much. Wow. 本当にね、温州からアントニー好きなあの国になったんですね。ありがとうございます。Thank you, Mr. Uka, for your sharing. And also next, I'd like to invite up uh, Dr. Tyler Hendricks. So, Dr. Tyler Hendricks, if you can please unmute yourself and share. Okay, thank you. Good okay, morning. Dr. Tyler Hendricks, so happy to see you. Happy to see you too, yeah. and also everybody else. And I'm grateful to be with you uh, every day and listen and share and receive so much from my wonderful brothers and sisters from America who I love so much and uh, I miss you. And I hope we can be together soon. And uh, I'm grateful uh, for Heavenly Parents Love that brought my parents together, Jack and Jane Hendricks, who everybody said in their they got married very late and every all their friends said they're not going to get married to anybody they'll just be single but they got married to each other and then my mother suffered so much pain and uh, to give birth to me just like your mother to you so like uh, prophet muhammad said no matter what you do you can't never pay back your mother for even one breath that she took while she was giving birth to you yeah. Yeah. So, and, and our true mother too, we can never pay her back for even one breath that she takes because yeah. she gave birth to us and she's giving birth to the whole world as Heavenly Mother and, and the Holy Spirit and true mother on the earth horizontally. Wow. And, yeah. So I'm so grateful for my parents, for all my ancestors who go way back to the very early days in America. Mm. And I'm grateful that I could attend Oakland Technical High School. Yay, Oakland Tech, because it was mostly African-American kids at that high school. And so I'm very grateful that I could go beyond, you know, all this kind of race, race issue stuff by having, you know, being good friends with all the, all the students. And uh, there's more and more that I'm grateful for. And I'm grateful for my meeting with uh, Milhan because he told me and I realized President Alkimi is such a special person. 
He's a special person. Also, I'm grateful for Yasu. You're at UTS right now, Barrytown. Mm -hmm. Yay, Barrytown. All right, white carpet room, historical place. I could recognize it. And now Kimi is amazing combination of diplomacy. To be a, a church president, you need to have a lot of diplomacy. And so I can see how he's very, he reaches out to lots of people and he connects people very artistically and very reasonably and he communicates very well. And so I really pray for all victory for YSP over the summer. Uh, peace designer, Tongyo Mudo, service projects, and most of all, <laughs> absolute pure love, absolute work together with High Noon and get, make a very good foundation for blessing and family life. Thank you very much. Wow, this is amazing, your reflection. Thank you so much, Dr. Hendricks. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Hendricks, for your sharing. And yes, he uh, spot on. I am at UTS for the next two days. Um, and with that, brothers and sisters, thank you for sharing uh, your uh, appreciations this morning. And now we're like to enter our, to a main portion of Morning Heart Devotion, which is our internal guidance from our North American Continental Director, Dr. Chunshik Yong. So welcome, Dr. Yong. Thank you. Good morning, good morning, my dear brothers and sisters, clergy and members of Four Peace. 안녕하십니까? Uh, today, I'd like to talk about the heavenly bride. Today's words are from True Mother's Memoir, Mother of Peace, page 74 and 75. I'd like to invite up our heavenly honey to read. A short time later, Mrs. O. Yong Chun, the devout member who had taken in my mother, went to her job in a clothing store on the second floor of the Nakwan building in central Seoul. She assisted the store owner at making garments. Garments. The owner was a longtime member we called the prayer grandmother. When Mrs. O arrived, the owner was sewing together a man's suit. Mrs. O sat next to her as she pumped the wheel of the sewing machine and asked casually, oh, who is the suit for? The suit is for Reverend Father Moon, was the grandmother's answer. He is going to wear it at his engagement ceremony. Mrs. O perked up immediately and her eyes widened as she asked the natural question, who is to be the bride? Well, replied the grandmother nonchalantly, the day of the engagement has been decided, but the bride hasn't been chosen yet. However, the ceremony is going to be held soon and so I am making his suit. Mrs. O's mind was buzzing. Who is going to be the bride? She pondered the question, but couldn't come up with any possibilities. Mrs. O was a person who often heard God's voice in revelations. In fact, she had been offering prayerful devotions for seven years for the sake of the appearance of the true mother. She right away took her question to God in prayer and she received a revelation. Because Eve fell when she was 16 years old, the heavenly bride needs to be younger than 20. This had never occurred to her before. It was only then that she understood the logic of God's will. She asked God again and again, who is the heavenly bride who is younger than 20? And before long, she thought of me. I know Hak Shahan, who is around 16, she said to herself. She often sits next to me in church. Why didn't I think of her? Could it really be her? At 10 o'clock that evening, Mrs. O was making her way home after finishing work. She was on the Nodiyang Jin bus as it was crossing the Han River when God spoke to her, it will be Hakja. 
it will be Hakcha. Thank you, Heavenly Honey. And <clears throat> here, uh, what are the what are the important channels through which God educates and nurtures a fallen human beings? We need to know that how Heavenly Father nurtures fallen human being. First one is, the first is prayer and devotion. With prayer and devotion, you can become spiritually very sensitive and hear the voice of heaven and you can open your heart and mind. The second is dreams and revelations. Through dreams and revelations, heaven develops human spirituality. So never ignore your dreams. If you pray very hard, if you put a lot of chong song with your almost sincerity, God truly tell you through your dreams. Dream is one of the way you can communicate with God Heavenly Father can intervene you and give a very clear instruction to you. That's why do not simply ignore about your dream. Of course, sometimes a normal dream, but some dream is very clear, unforgettable, and then remind you again and again, this kind of dream, definitely, God tell you what to do, where to go. And then third point, what are the important channels through which God educates and nurtures a fallen human being? The third is the able of faith. Heaven always nurtures me by making me meet able whom I respect. This is very important. How Heavenly Father educate me and nurture me? through your able, not just only simple you are able, you really can respect. Therefore, in your life of faith, you don't have any respect. Then your life of faith is really in danger. Your life of faith need to have really great able who you can, who you, uh, the, the, whom you can respect. Very important point. I don't, I don't respect anyone. I only believe in God and believe in true prayer. You know, God and believe in not surrounding, uh, not surrounding with you. That's why in your present situation, you need to find somebody who really can respect you. Or whom really can respect you. This is an important point. That's why I'm so grateful when I was young, I met great my teacher when I in, in, in my school and I joined unification movement. I met my spiritual father, Reverend Johan Lee. And then later on, I know I met through father, through mother, directly guided me. This is, it, it, it is really important. However, you are senior more than any other one. And then you cannot find anyone really can respect. Then you have to be such kind of the model able someone can respect you. Number four, what are the important channels through the which God can educate and nurture a fallen human being? Number four, by serving Cain. We get to know God's heart just as parents themselves grow, as they raise their children, faith grows as they raise Cain. Without raising up Cain, I never understand what the Abel's heart, I never understand what the parental heart, I never understand who God is. That's why through the raising Cain, this is the fastest way to you, I can grow up. And I understand God. That's why God educated me, yeah? asking me to really serve your cane. 
to the serving cane, to the raising cane, I, I can throw up myself very well. This is a very important point. You know, those who are support Hong Demonim and those who are support of a true mother, you see, you know, surrounding mothers at that time, most of them are really, really, how to say, uh, strong faith of strong the life of faith. And then common point, all of them are very much prayerful people, very much dedicated people, very much about the Jung Song life. You can see through almost sincerity and prayer and devotion, they always receive the dream, they receive revelation and had a dream. And then God directly tell them what to do. And then Hong Demon's life of faith is amazing. Wherever he, she go, always serving people, always serving able, and become such a humble. And then through her own religion, she raising up many, many people, not just only through mother. You see, what are the important channel through the which God educate and nurtures a fallen human being? We need to understand always a four point prayer and devotion, and then you need to treat your dream and revelation very well. The point is, you know, uh, you uh, you need to. Uh, the point is able of faith. You need to have a able number four is through the serving your king. Okay, please read. Continue. God's revelation descended upon Mrs. O like a wave of energy in the autumn night sky. She arrived in her neighborhood around 11 p.m., but instead of going home, she hurried to see my mother who lived near, near her. Sune, are you sleeping? Not yet, come in. How old is your daughter? My mother gave her a puzzled look. Mrs. O had skipped all formalities and asked a point blank question. Why are you visiting me in the middle of the night to ask how old my daughter is? Don't change the subject. Please just tell me. She's 16, turning 17 next year. When is her birthday? She was born in 1943 on the sixth day of the first lunar month. She has the same birthday as our master. Why are you suddenly asking me such questions? Mrs. O and my mother were old friends. They were the same age and they had attended the same church in their hometown in North Korea. In addition, their mothers were very close friends. My mother, in fact, was living in Naughty Yangjin across the street from Mrs. O. Mrs. O had found this place for my mother when she had fallen into poor health while doing her church work. Just as abruptly as she had arrived, Mrs. O bid my mother good night and departed, leaving my mother to figure out what was on her mind. <clears throat> the next day, as soon as it became light, Mrs. O was on her way back to work at the Nakwan building. God's revelation about me completely distracted her, and the workday came and went without her realizing what she was doing. When she finished her work, she went directly to see a fortune teller. To this day, Koreans often consult fortune tellers for guidance about marriage, and that's what Mrs. O did. She described to the fortune teller the two persons about whom she was consulting without mentioning their names. Right away, the fortune teller's eyes widened. There may be a large gap between the ages of these two persons, but it doesn't matter. They are a match made in heaven. I have really seen such a couple whose fortunes are so aligned. Mrs. O felt her heart was about to explode. She calmed herself and went directly to the church to meet our teacher and tell him everything. Thank you, Heavenly Honey. Today is the Father's word. Think about Jesus position. Jesus position. So Heavenly Honey, please 
read continuously. Think about Jesus' position. You have to stand in front of the sacrificial offer altar as an offering full of jun sign. But do you have the qualification to stand in front of that altar? If Jesus were to come to the earth now, not to the Israelites or Jews, but in front of the unification movement, he would cling on to us and weep bitterly. And as he looks at all corners of this peninsula, as he sees the untangled circumstances of this people, he would offer his struggles and weep bitter, bitterly for us. Have you thought about Jesus' position? Thank you, Heavenly Honey. Think of yourself as a historical sacrificial offering. Such an offering is a person who loves a place more than anyone and offers a chong song and sheds blood, sweat, and tears for that place more than any other one. That's why as a, as, a, his, as a historical sacrificial offering, your attitude is really important. You are representative of the you know, all 6,000 years of historical providence, all historical about the central figures and your ancestors. Do not think just your own self as your own. We need to think we are historical sacrificial offering. If you want to go to your mission area, what would you inherit from the ancestors who offer the Jung Song there before you? You, you? you would inherit their tears, their heart, their devotion. So always, you know, of course, we just only focus on our own mission, our, our own job. We are busy, busy here and there. But you need to connect to your ancestors, your, your past historical, historical figures vertically. Very important. You need to inherit wherever you go from the past, your ancestors' effort and Chong Song Foundation, their sweat and tears. That's why Father always encouraging when you, when, wherever you go or which place you stay, you would inherit their tears. You need to inherit your ancestors' tears, your ancestors' heart. You need to inherit your ancestors' devotion. So you, if you inherit vertically from your ancestors, from your central figures, then this is the beginning point to go forward. It is important. You know, to inherit their tears and sweat and heart and devotion, you need to have a lot of chongsam. A lot of chongsam. I came to America as a missionary here, as a continental daughter. And then Abraham Lincoln can accuse me. Hey, Dr. Young. I work harder than you. I love this nation more than you. I shed tears more than you. He can accuse. However, my heart toward God, my love toward America, work harder than Abraham Lincoln or George Washington more than any presidents, more than any ancestors. There is a way to inherit their heart and tears and their devotion. Without Jung Song, without prayer, it is impossible to inherit about the, you know, their tears and sweat and blood. If you shed more blood and sweat and tears than anyone who has visited that area, then the ancestors of that area will come help you. If I Jung Sung, if I put my Jung Sung more than Abraham Lincoln, and then Abraham surely will come down and help me. 
if I put my Johnson more than George Washington, and he surely come down to me and bow down to me and help me. So this is the way how can we uh, uh, mobilize our spiritual world. My Johnson more than any other ancestors who lived in America. That is the way to mobilize the spiritual world. When you look at your mission area, think about how much Jesus and true parents would cry for that place. Can you imagine about that? You must offer more Johnson and shed more tears than the tears shed by your area's ancestors. That is how you mobilize spiritual world. Set the conditions that draws sympathy from the spiritual world. How much have you shed tears for your mission area? Know that every place has traces of the tears left behind by the ancestor who lived there. That's why, for me, I don't have a capability. I don't have any kind of ability. Only one way in America, what can I do? My first step is, need to put chungs on. Need to wake up earlier than any other one. Prepare God's word and my preparation more than anyone's preparation. Or harder than any other one. Think of this nation more than any other one. This is the way to inherit our Heavenly Father's heart, two parents' heart, our ancestors' heart. Okay, next word, please, Heavenly Honey. There is no place in God's heart I have not entered. There is no place in God's heart I have not entered. Do not forget that God has come looking for us from an indescribable place of sadness. We must move forward with the heart God had when he came to us. I pray you can fight with all your body and obtain complete victory. Because our heart and lineage are different, we require a character that can unite the heart and the lineage. Even if we could not be filial children to our parents, if we give birth and raise our kids while repenting bitterly, the path to atonement will open. Yeah, really incredible father's work. You look at the father, I already explained last time. He just came back from ocean. He's so tired. Before going, uh, going back to his bed, he's still praying. When he having a meal, and then <laughs> he dropped his spoon and slept. His life and much put his effort and his chunks on. He is your father. He is my father, our father. And then father talking about in the valleys, in the valley of God's heart are traces of his tears in each corners every part of the corners. We need to know that God's sorrowful tears are in every single living creature and in every single human beings. Therefore, we must inherit God's tears that war wept as he took care of each piece of the creation and each individual. You know, recently I, you know, walking here and there, here no place to cook, no choice. I need to eat, you know, from outside. So when I having a lunch, I need to go to Korean restaurant, Hanbat restaurant. 
uh, it takes around you know 15 minutes from New York Hotel. And on the way, I can see many people in New York Street. Not only that, whenever I look at each individual, whenever I look at each individual, I think about how many tears got shed for that person. And I think about how many more tears God will have to shed for that person to be restored. Whenever I see any individual, wow, God has so much tears. Then how much have, how, how many more tears God need to shed a tear, then that person can come back to God's bosom. Oh my God. In each creatures, in each item of the old things, in each person, they are children of God. You know, to become perfect being, you know, to go back to God's bosom, how much still more God have I need to shed tears. When I think about that, my tears come down. Oh my God, heavenly God, what kind of a destiny do you have? Since you lost your children, you know, you are really handling, deal with each one of a human being. You are a unique being. As you are unique being also, you take care of the each unique human being individually through the personal touch. God take care of in, in each individual through the personal touch. Put so much jungle, so much tears, so much care. And when I look at the people, then and then what the what the, their degree, you know, their ancestors, how much they, they how to say accumulated their ancestor Jung Song, then that person can go back to God's person. Wow. How many of them know God? How many of them understand God's heart? Very, very rare. How many unificationist members? So rare. Can you imagine? Unification church member, very small numbers. However, Heavenly Father need to rely on you, need to rely on me. Because only we are the one who know God's heart. We are the only no divine principle and true parents of God's providence. He need to rely on me. He need to beg to me. Oh my God. That's why whenever I look at each individual, I can feel God's jangsang to him. God's tears to them. How much we make God suffer? How much we make God shed tears? Wow. Really? We are unfilial sons and daughters. We are eternally indebted to our heavenly parents and true parents. The secret to uh, winning the struggle with yourself and the struggle with the Satan is to understand the tears of Changsong devotion God shed up until now. The tears you shed for the sake of God can become a weapon that can defend against the evil and def uh, defeat Satan. How to how can I defeat Satan? How can I really defend and against the evil? What's the best way? How can we completely conquer Satan and conquer enemy's heart? Only one way, only one weapon. 
if you shed tears for God, if you have that kind of the tearful, that kind of filial heart, this is the weapon who has dignity. I am telling you, who has dignity? One who shed tears for God's heart. One who comfort God's heart. And his suffering as my own suffering. His tears should be my tears. If you have to have that kind of heart and tears, this is one of the great weapon you can defend and against the evil and you can defeat Satan. If you fight uh, Satan with God's tears, you will win 100 battles and 100 times. Yet it is not possible with just the power of the one human. Even with the mind and body unity, it will not be strong enough. What is the best weapon, a weapon to fight with Satan? With God's tears. With God's tears centering on filial heart. Centering on filial piety. This is the best weapon to really conquer Satan. Win Satan. My brothers and sisters, father here, talking about heart and lineage are different. Heart represents, represents our mind and lineage represent, represents the body. Thus, our heart and lineage must unite. As we experience the sorrowful heart of God, our fallen lineage must be completely changed. Without experiencing God's heart, your fallen nature never ever change. This is my experience since I joined church more than 46 years. Do you know what is my conclusion? How can I change my blood lineage? We are, you know, even Buddhism, and then they are meditating how to make unity mind and body, many kind of the chunks of many kind of devotion, but it is impossible to make unity between mind and body. Cannot control, you know, four kind of the physical desires, this and that, how to remove a fallen blood lineage, impossible. But my conclusion, after research and research and study and study, Father Swan, what is the best way to change my fallen blood lineage and become filial sons and daughters? Conclusion is, you need to experience God's sorrowful heart. Once you get it, once you experience God's sorrowful heart, you never go back to your own way. When you see God's such a miserable situation as a child, you cannot come in sin. You cannot go your own way. You cannot say, I am so tired. And my mother said, only filial heart, only filial son and daughters who experience God's sorrowful heart can conquer everything. Through filial piety can control my physical desires. Through filial piety, I can weaver win over Satan. Today's youth ministry, what is the heart of the resurrected person? You are, you are a resurrected person or not? How can we distinguish? How can we know? I'd like to talk about that. What is the heart of the resurrected person? When you are hungry, but your focus is on the God's will rather than what you want to eat, then you are a revived individual. I can focus on God's will beyond eating, beyond sleeping. Even though I am very hungry, 
I can focus on God's will, even forgetting my hunger. Father said, again, you are a resurrected person. You are truly, you are a revived individual. If you wonder how hungry God must be, even though you, you yourself is hungry, or if you are concerned for God's agony, even though yourself feelings agony, you are a revived individual. <laughs> when you are hungry and then feel God's hunger, And then if you are really, you, you feel your own agony, and then you concern for God's agony. And everything related to, you know, God's situation. You can feel God's agony. You can feel God's hunger. Then you are completely resurrected person. If you have not experienced revival, if you simply accept everything that comes at you, you have not experienced revival if you cling to your agony or difficult circumstances and try to solve them on your own. If someone gets angry with me and I get angry without delay, and when difficulties come to me, if there is a dissatisfaction and complaints rather than gratitude, that person has not yet been resurrected. If I, if, if I cannot focus on God, digest my emotion, I am still a fallen person. I, I don't have experience yet what is the resurrection. You are not your own, nor is your life your own. Then, then when you hit on obstacles to whom does it belong? Do you think I belong to God? Do you think you treat yourself as, as God, as God's belonging? Then when you hit on obstacle to whom does it belong? You need to accept in your heart, I am sharing the burden to the obstacles my heavenly father faces. Then you will experience spiritual revival. If I encounter God's suffering through my suffering, I am a resurrected person. Wow. If you treat you are, you belong to God, belong to God's possession. You treat yourself as God. Then any situation come to you, that is a belong to God's situation. God belong to same, belong to God's situation. Persecution come, then you need to think, God, he's the one who now received the persecution. Someone angry with you, then you need to think God is really the same kind of situation. If you think that, that way, if we deal with this kind of situation all the time, centering on God's point of view, and also the I belong to God, I am belong to God's sons and daughters, really, you can have experience, experience of the resurrection. When you are hungry, agonizing and sad, what do you think of first? Do you think about yourself first or do you think of God first? Visit your church, go out, go out witness to other families, experience being ignored or opposed. Each time that happens, cling to and repent on how you have ignored God, opposed to God, and realize how sad he must have felt, and you will belong to God and will experience revival.
When someone opposes you and uh, distrust you, you should feel sorry and think that it must be because you distrust the God. Distrust the God. When you do this, you will be qualified to take responsibility for the other person's sin. Your sin is my sin. Someone persecute me, then I am the one who persecute God. And if you reflect that way, if you treat the other person's sin is my sin, do not blame him, do not criticize him. Your problem is my problem. Your sin is my sin. If we have this kind of attitude, then both your object partner, yourself, and the other person can receive salvation. Therefore, he who manages and uh, anti, uh, appreciates another circumstances and heart as if it were his own will become a uh, pra practi uh, practitioner of love and truly revived individual. How about you, my brothers and sisters? I'm talking about was the heart of a resurrected person. You are a resurrected person, while still you are a fallen person. Resurrected person is different. Whatever you're dealing with somebody, when whatever dealing with any kind of circumstances and situation, always think centering on God's point of view, treating myself as God's belonging, then without exception, everybody have experience of resurrection. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Yong, for your wonderful message for this morning. And definitely uh, just being able to help us understand how through Demonim's actions, her lifestyle, was a way for us to also inherit and understand how God is trying to educate us. And through True Father's example, just how much Jonsung and um, blood, sweat, and tears he poured out so that he can really be able to move the spirit world and really be the owner of that area to be uh, able to pour out love. And finally, for us to really understand the resurrected heart, for us to be, feel resurrected is completely to be able to deny ourselves and fill our spirit and heart with God's point of view. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much, Dr. Young, for your precious Good. message today. Thank and you. now I'd like to invite everyone to go into breakouts so that we can share, each of us share our insights and takeaways from this morning's message. And if you're joining here alone, then please take this time to reflect. So let us go into our breakouts.
And welcome back, brothers and sisters. I hope you had a wonderful time sharing your key takeaways and insights uh, from Dr. Young's message. And now at this time, uh, to share with everybody, I'd like to first invite up Mr. Johnson and Yukimi Okon. So Johnson and Yukimi Okon, if you can please unmute yourself. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, um, thank you very much, Yasu. Good morning, Dr. Young, and uh, good morning, dear brothers and sisters. Uh, first and second, James, um, I greet you all this morning. Uh, what we were sharing this, uh, my wife and I, and also one sister, Miss Lee, with me, uh, we were say saying that um, <clears throat> it is very, what Dr. Young has been saying is just guiding us to, you know, to align ourselves with God's heart. And also, um, what he has been <clears throat> telling us on along is how, because of his own experience, he was able to really understand God deep heart. And because after the fall, as you guys know, um, the archangel took uh, <clears throat> God's sovereignty from you know from God, and also took God took Adam and Eve, your heart and your mind, everything from God, so it's all from them. So since then, we have been really um, <clears throat> distant ourselves, our heart and our mind from God. So that has been our problem. And then we became like a stranger to one another and like, you know, enemy to one another. So that is what we are not trying to restore. Mm -hmm. And all along, that is what Dr. Young has been trying to guide us to, to restore our heart and our mind back to God. And also, I think... Um, what Yasu said that what always helps him is through prayer. Whenever he's trying to really understand God's heart, he goes into prayer. And when he prays, he can be able to, to reconnect his heart and his mind to God's heart. And that is what we are sharing. And also the other sister, Miss Lee, um, she said that um, we have to be always humble ourselves. And then we have to be, um, be able to understand when God is trying to use somebody else to educate us and guide us. We have to deny ourselves and be, you know, and learn God's heart or God's way. In that way, we can also be able to understand who mm -hmm. God's heart and what mm -hmm. we are also trying to learn. That is what we, we share in our group this morning. Thank Hamza, Hamza, Hamza Johnson. How about uh, Yukimi Chang? <laughs> yes, hi. Thank you so much, Dr. Young. Yeah, this morning, uh, this sentence is a really, really uh, hit my heart. You know, uh, if we give birth and raise our kids while repenting bitter, bitterly, the path to atonement will open. Yes, uh, I'm so grateful because God is always, always uh, open the way uh, to me to, to be a filial daughter. Yes, I'm so happy. I'm so grateful because God is waiting. Um, yes, my uh, to grow my heart as a filial daughter. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you, Johnson, and you give me okon gamsahamida. Ne suajasimida. Thank you. Thank you to the okon couple for sharing. And uh, at this time, I'd also like to invite up Mrs. Mie Lepalkin. Mrs. Mie Lepalkin, if you can please unmute yourself. Hello. Oh, Mie Sa, unmute, please. Unmute. Yes. Hi. Can I hear? Uh, can you hear me? Good morning. Um, yes, I'm. I'm. I'm so grateful to um, to really share my heart. Now. I was talking to Milham. I I'm trying to figure out, you know, how my my Johnson is not not enough. Still, I don't I don't feel I brought victory for. For your parents and to God, yet, um, um, you know, I, I, I feel, you know, God, God loved me and God guided me 
mm. all the way right now right now this moment also mm. but um, i'm 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 so sorry um all the brothers and sisters the beautiful brothers and sisters and all the johnsons i i know now is uh because of true mother's victory i i want to unite with true mothers and uh, those all the formula course you know dr young you yourself you know showing us mm. in your most devotions and uh the uh, johnson and uh, chuck saran and uh, the beautiful beautiful relationship you know we we are building to the mm. communities and and i'm trying to open up my heart more and more and i i'm so so grateful but uh, I, i really feel my i guess my johnson I, I didn't break through yet, and I'm I'm so sorry for that. I'm repenting myself. Mm. I share with you, Han. Kamsamida, kamsamida, Miesa. Arigato gozaimas. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Opalkin, for your honest sharing. And uh, yes, we can uh, always, as Dr. Young says, we can yeah really keep going, and then God will be really welcoming us and ready to uh, take our victory in Johnson. So thank you, brothers and sisters, for really sharing your heart and uh, your insights and takeaways with one another. And of course, I'd like to encourage everyone to please continue to share um, about your takeaways and insights to uh, even across past morning devotion, as well as inviting brothers and sisters to uh, come on uh, to view and, and be inspired each and every single day in the morning at the beginning of their uh, day. And especially with your uh, trinities, uh, with your own online holy communities, then that can lay an incredible foundation. And at this time, I'd like to ask you to put your attention towards the chat uh, because there will be a link provided for the online donation to support Morning Heart Devotion Ministry to continue strong so that uh, we'll be able to inspire uh, the entire world every, each and every single day. And uh, for anyone joining on Facebook and YouTube, uh, you can see at the bottom of my screen. And with that, brothers and sisters, we would like to go to our musical offering for today. And I'd like to invite up our dear brother, Mr. Bob Abendroth. So, Mr. Bob Abendroth, if you can please unmute yourself. Good morning. Oh, Bob. Oh, <laughs> Abendroth. Good morning, Reverend Young. I'm Dr. Young. How are you? Yay. I've been wanting to sing a song for a while. Um, this is a song written by someone named Robin Mark, who uh, has some love for the Old Testament. And um, I hope my sound's good enough here. I hope, I hope you can hear me okay. Um, so here, here it is. Um, <clears throat> These are the days of Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant, Moses, righteousness being restored. And these are the days of great trial, of famine and darkness and sword. Yet we are the voice in the desert crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. Lift your voice, it's a year of jubilee, out of Zion's hills salvation comes. And these are the days of Eli Ezekiel, dry bone becoming as flesh. And these are the days of your servant, David, rebuilding the temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest. The fields are white in your world. And we are the laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. 
Lift your voice, it's a year of jubilee. Out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. Lift your voice, it's a year of jubilee. Out of Zion's hills, salvation comes. Thank you very much. Wow, great song, Bob. Thank you so much, Abendros. Kamsamida. Hey, we'll see you Sunday in uh, District uh, Subregion 2. Yay, see you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Bob Abendra, for that wonderful song. And, um, and now, brothers and sisters, to be able to close out this incredible Morning Heart Devotion experience for today, uh, in prayer, I'd like to invite up uh, Mr. Shogo Nakaza. Shogo. Good morning, Dr. Young. Good morning, oh, everybody Dr. there! Oh! <laughs> yeah, actually, Dr. Young, we're doing a retreat as the core leaders of PARP, New Jersey. So we're in Pennsylvania. So, oh, Pennsylvania, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but everyone, please join me in prayer. Sarang Ashinin Hanuk Pumonim, Sing Yashinin Shunjin Shampumonim, Kamsamida Sarangamida. Heavenly Parent, we want to thank you this morning for really this precious morning devotion that Dr. Young offers to us every single day without fail, Heavenly Parent. The precious words of guidance that Dr. Young isn't giving just from his own heart or his own mind, but really conveying to us truth and true parents' words, Heavenly Parent. Truth that can really transform our lives and really resolve all challenges and issues that we are currently facing if we can just apply it and understand, Heavenly Parent. These are truths that we've received for so many years, but Heavenly Parent, that we weren't able to fully digest and understand, but you are patient with us and you continuously love us, Heavenly Parent. We want to really offer our gratitude to you for that. Heavenly Parent, right now we're living in such a providential and historical time, Heavenly Parent, where we are living with our true parents, the only begotten daughter and Heavenly Parent that no one in history has ever had an opportunity like this and will ever have an opportunity like this ever again. And so, Heavenly Parent, we want to really understand the preciousness and how blessed we are. Heavenly Parent. And so knowing that we want to offer our Jung Sung here with Dr. Young, he's every single day he's offering this morning devotion as a condition for America to really be restored. Heavenly Parent, for America to respond to true parents, call them for it to become heavenly America, that you can really trust and raise up. Heavenly Parent, we want to fulfill your vision for America here. And so, Heavenly Parent, we want to have hope. Heavenly Parent, we want to be inspired and moved. Heavenly Parent, sometimes their hearts are tired, Heavenly Parent, after many years of investing and investing. But, Heavenly Parent, that mother is really lifting the entire movement up and bringing us all together, moving towards a heavenly unified Korea, Heavenly Parent, moving towards 2027. Channel Guk and so Heavenly Parent, we want to align our hearts to that and really have hope again. Heavenly Parent, revive our spirits again and move forward. Heavenly Parent, that through this, that we can inherit the most precious blessing in Heavenly Parent, we can repay the incredible love, really offer a filial heart towards you. So, Heavenly Parent, we want to just thank you, Heavenly Parent, that you've been shedding historical tears, Heavenly Parent, that so many of our elders have been laying the foundation. True parents have already prepared everything. And so, Heavenly Parent, we just want to really connect our hearts to that and really inherit, humbly inherit through Jung Slug and Heavenly Parent to be able to really bring victory to you in this time. Heavenly Parent, we just want to, again, thank you so much Heavenly Parent, for all of your love and your investment. Really, we hope that we can make you proud. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's such a devoted prayer. Wow. So inspiring. Kamsamida, my cup, brothers and sisters. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you, Shogo. And with that, brothers and sisters, thank you all for joining today's Morning Heart Devotion. And uh, we will see each other tomorrow, bright early, early in the morning. 
And thank you, Dr. Young. And we wish you all a happy and beautiful Victoria's Day today. Okay. Bye -bye. Have a nice day. Thank you, Dr. Young. Thank you. 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 Thank you.